In the last two modules, we looked at complex number representation of vectors and methods to solve two types of trigonometric equations. In this module, we will use the material from the last two modules to study position kinematics of a four bar mechanism. The first question that arises is what is position kinematics or direct position kinematics? The position kinematics problem can be stated as given the independent variables, compute the configuration of all the links of a mechanism or compute the position of any point on the link of the mechanism. So the first question here is that how many number of independent variables are there and what are these independent variables for any given mechanism. So let us first look at the four bar mechanism. A four bar mechanism has three moving bodies and one fixed body which is the ground. Between each pair of moving bodies there is a revolute joint allowing one degree of freedom motion. We used Grubler's criteria to find the degrees of freedom of a mechanism and we know that the degree of freedom of a four bar mechanism is one. That means that the number of independent variables that we need to specify for the four bar mechanism is one. If we specify this variable, if we put in a number for this variable, then we can compute the position of any point on any link of the mechanism. What we will now see is how to go about doing this. Before we start, we have to first be careful about reference frames or coordinate systems. So we will be defining three reference frames. The first is the global coordinate system, which is shown in capital X, capital Y here. This is the same as the world frame that I described earlier. The second is the locally non-rotating coordinate system. In this picture, it is denoted with the axis small x and small y. A locally non-rotating coordinate system has the same orientation as a global coordinate system, but it is fixed to each moving body and it translates or moves with the moving body, but it does not rotate with the moving body. The third coordinate system, which is the locally rotating coordinate system, is shown in blue in this picture with axis x prime y prime. A locally rotating coordinate system, as the name suggests, is attached to a moving body or moving link and it also rotates with the moving link. At this point, I am just defining these three different coordinate systems. We will shortly see their usage. So how do we state formally the position kinematics problem for a four bar mechanism? Geometrically, a four bar mechanism is a quadrilateral. Therefore, three angles, let's say theta two, theta three, and the angle theta four is enough to specify the configuration of the four bar mechanism. There can be other choices of these angles also. I'm just choosing three of them, which is convenient, and we will see why it is convenient. Our goal becomes, given the angle theta two, find the angles theta three and theta four. Theta three is the angle the coupler or the link AB is making with the x-axis of the global coordinate system or a locally non-rotating coordinate system that is fixed at the pivot A. Theta 4 is the angle made by the coupler or the vector O4B with the x-axis of the global coordinate system, the angle being measured positive anticlockwise. Here, without loss of generality, we will assume that the link 2 is the driven link. That means the angle theta 2 is specified or given to us. We could have also assumed that the link 4 is driven. Nothing changes in the problem. So to summarize, the problem now becomes given the angle theta 2, I want to find the angles theta 3 and angle theta 4. In order to do this, we will use what is known as the vector loop closure equation. The first step in the procedure is to assign a vector to each link. The picture on the slide 
shows a vector assigned to each link and the vectors are named R1, R2, R3 and R4 for links 1, 2, 3 and 4 respectively. The link lengths are A for the driving link, B for the coupler, C for the other link that is fixed to the ground and D for the ground link. And this is the standard notation that we will be using throughout this lecture. Since we have already designed the mechanism, the lengths A, B, C, D are known to us. And as I said before, the angle theta 2 is also known to us. It is the angle that we are controlling or whose motion we are controlling. For example, if you have a motor driving the link O2A or the link 2, then you could have a motor encoder which will give you the angle of the link 2. So what is the vector loop closure equation? Consider the vector O2B. O2B is equal to O2A plus AB. Now O2B is also equal to O2O4 plus O4B. O2A is R2, so this can be written as R2 plus R3. And the next one can be written as R1 plus R4 because O2O4 is R1 and O4B is R4. Therefore, I have R2 plus R3 is equal to R1 plus R4. Or if I take R1 and R4 to the left hand side, then I get this equation here R2 plus R3 minus R4 minus R1 equals to 0. This is the vector loop closure equation. It is not necessary to select the direction of the vectors as I have selected here. You can choose the direction of the vectors in a different way. What it will do is change the corresponding equation. So I could have chosen R1 in this direction. Then my equation would have been R1 plus R2 plus R3 minus R4 is equal to 0. Similarly, I could have changed the direction in which I have chosen R4 or R3. However, that doesn't affect on how we proceed or how we measure the angles since we have to always measure the angle of a vector positive anticlockwise at the tail of the vector. So now that we have the vector loop closure equation, which I have repeated here, let us write each one of these vectors in the polar complex form. So let's first look at the vector R2. The length of the vector is A and the angle that it makes with the x-axis of the global coordinate system is theta 2, which is measured positive anticlockwise and which is measured at the tail of the vector. So R2 is A to the power of J theta 2. Similarly, the vector R3 has length B and the angle it makes with the x-axis is theta 3 measured in the anticlockwise direction. So it is B e to the power of j theta 3, the vector R3. Similarly, R4 equal to C e to the power of j theta 4. And again, the theta 4 angle is measured positive anticlockwise from the x-axis of the global coordinate system. Now the vector R1, here I have written as d e to the power of j theta 1, which is correct. But in the picture, the theta 1 is actually 0. But I have written the formula here more generally. You can think that I could have had my fixed pivots like this. Then this would be the angle theta 1. Now what I do is substitute all these values of R1, R2, R3, R4 into the vector loop closure equation. And I obtain the equation here. Now let's look at the case where I said that you could have changed the direction of the vectors. So what would have happened if I chose R1 to be like this? Then the angle the vector R1 makes with the x-axis would be measured anticlockwise positive and theta1 would have been pi for this figure instead of theta1 
being 0. Similarly, if I had taken R4 in this direction, then the angle theta 4 would be measured at the tail of the vector here. So this is B. The angle theta 4 would be this angle. If you define theta 4 as this angle, you can still write R4 equal to C e to the power of J theta 4. The first equation here essentially copies the vector loop closure equation from the last slide. Since there are a lot of symbols here, what I want you to understand is which one of these symbols are known constants and which one of them are variables. The symbols that are changing and known are called the independent variables in this slide. So since my link lengths are known because I have already synthesized or designed the mechanism, A, B, C, D are known. Since the angle theta 1 that the ground link or the fixed link makes with the global coordinate system is always constant because the fixed link doesn't move with respect to the global coordinate system. Therefore, theta 1 is also a constant. In the particular picture or example that I chose, theta 1 is equal to 0. In most cases, you can choose your global coordinate system in such a way so that you can make theta 1 equal to 0. But as you will see later, there will be some cases where we cannot do that. So you need to understand that there is a constant theta 1 there. The independent variable, that is a variable that is not a constant, but it is known, we can sense it or we can measure it, is theta 2. What you have to find are the angles theta 3 and the theta 4. And this theta 3 and theta 4, apart from being a function of theta 2, are also the function of the link lens as well as the angle theta 1. We will use Euler's formula. So to remind you of Euler's formula, e to the power of j theta equal to cos theta plus j sine theta. Use this formula for each one of these terms here. The first term gives rise to these two. The second term gives rise to this. The third one gives rise to this. And the fourth one gives rise to this. Now what I will do is that I will collect all the real part and all the imaginary part. And since the left hand side of this equation is equal to zero, that is only possible when both the real part and the imaginary part are individually zero. So I have two equations here by collecting the real and the imaginary part. Again, what you have to do here is look at these two equations and identify what are the unknowns. The unknowns here are theta 3 and theta 4. Everything else is known. So we have two trigonometric equations in two unknown variables, theta 3 and theta 4. In this line, I am just rewriting the equations here and I am rewriting it so that I collect the coefficients of the cos theta 3, cos theta 4 and sin theta 3, sin theta 4 terms and take the constants and put it on the right hand side. Why do I do this? I do this so that I can put it in the standard form of problem 2 that I described in the last module. So from equation 2, these are my equations that I can derive. And from here, you should be immediately able to see that they are of the form of the problem 2 that we had discussed previously, which was a cos phi 1 plus b cos phi 2 plus c 1 equal to 0, and a sin phi 1 plus b sin phi 2 plus c 2 equal to 0. And what is the correspondence between this capital A, b, c 1 and the variables here? Capital A is the same as small b, b equals to minus c, c 1 equal to minus d cos theta 1 minus a cos theta 2, and c 2 equal to minus d sin theta 1 minus a sin theta 2. There is a typo in the slide here. And phi 1 and phi 2 are the angles theta 3 and theta 4. Remember that a, b, c1, c2 are constants. Since we know these constants, we can use the method that you described in the last module to solve for phi 1 or phi 2 or essentially theta 3 and theta 4. There will be two solutions for theta 3 and theta 4. In the next module, I will provide a numerical example that illustrates this calculation.